I get that they're all fusing. They're all nullified. They're all odd. Our Ampen is shining. The Chivra, the whiteness of our Ampen is shining. The intensity of our Ampen is shining. The first point of creation, that link between creator and creation, Kesser, the crowd. I get that's very intense. I get all the attributes are nullified. I get they fuse. But why did they become kind? I thought it was amazing last week that again, no, this was not planned. That last week we learned a technique of how our, our commandments can literally help everyone in the world. This is classical Tanya, but it just happened to be in this one spot. And we happen to have been at that spot exactly last week. So what was the technique? Let's remind ourselves because we're really in the middle of learning about it. Rebbe said, that we've been discussing in this chapter, your service of God, your service, your fear, your relationship. Of course, this is piggybacking on 40 chapters of your varying levels of love and joy in God. And that's not enough. It's not enough that I'm doing something that's spiritually benefiting me, that's making sure that I have this great relationship with God. What I'm doing has to be for the Jewish people. And there's a way. And the way is in your mind, intending, thinking, Focusing this act I'm about to do, this commandment, this mitzvah, this Torah I'm about to study, should not be for me. It should be for the Jewish people. Who am I to access the Jewish people? Well, the Rebbe explains that all souls are sourced in the same repository of souls called Shechina. Shechina, which means the indwelling, is a fluid term that exists on various spiritual levels and on Depending on the level, depends what's going on there. We have the Shekhinah in Atzilos, which is the repository of all souls. So when a Jew is thinking, the Torah we're about to learn right now in this class tonight, all the spiritual benefits my soul should accrue from learning this Torah, I don't want it. I want to be selfless with it. I want to give it away to the Jewish people, literally, because my soul is part of the souls of all the Jews in Shekhinah. So instead of the godliness coming to me, the godliness is going to Shekhinah, to the source of all souls, as we're going to discuss now, fuses with the spirituality of the souls, the spirituality of the souls, spirituality of the commandments, spirituality of the Torah study, and from there trickles down and affects equally every single Jew in the world, yourself included, not more than any other Jew. This commandment, this Torah study is for the Jewish people. So this is amazing. Because you're given a tool, you're given a piece of arsenal so powerful that literally 15 million plus Jews can benefit any commandment you choose from any mitzvah, from any Torah study. You have to be selfless. It's not about you. It's about all Yisrael, the family of the Jewish people. You can literally give this greatest power in the world, the power of doing a commandment, the power of studying Torah, and gift it to the Jewish people. So we were at the very end of reading that. We're on page 114. Um, so let's just go back. One, two, three, four long lines. We're in the last word. The Yiskavit. So when the person is doing this commandment, if he is selflessly gifting it to the Jewish people, he should intend to draw down the light of God, not on himself. Amakor nafsho. Not on me, not on my soul, on the source of my soul, which is the source of all the Jewish people's souls. So God doesn't, don't bring it down to my soul. Don't bring it down to me. Bring it to the source of my soul, which is the source of the souls of every single Jew. In our source, we're all in the same place. And let there this fusion take place between the energy of the commandment and the energy of the soul. And that fusion, the products that's created from that fusion, from that intimacy between the godliness of the mitzvah and the godliness of the soul, that intimacy creates a child, creates an energy. And that energy should go to every single Jewish soul. L'yachtam, to fuse them. Sham, as I'll explain later, what we mean by this fusion, and this is what it means, and we say this line before Baruch Shamar, that we're doing should cause, l'shem, there's a purpose here, yichud, a fusion of two levels of godliness, and we say this, we say it actually softly, 
it's the intro line to our prayers, which is why we say it right before Baruch Shamar, because that's like when we're really, until then it was sort of introducing, introducing. Now we're really getting into the heart of prayer with Baruch Shamar. So we introduce it with the statement of purpose. What's this about? And really what's all our service about? L'shem, Yichud, Kotchebrich, Shchente. Not just prayer. Every service I do all day long is to fuse two energies of God together. Some Sephardic people that are more steeped in Kabbalah say this line before many commandments they do all day. We say it once a day before Baruch Shamar of the morning prayers. So it's like the statement of purpose of the morning prayers. And it's really the statement of purpose of all day. Because it's not just for my prayers. Any service of God I do all day long is for this goal. What's the goal? L'shem, for the purpose of Yichud, a fusion of Kuchabrich and Shechente. Kuchabrich and Shechente are Aramaic terms. In Hebrew, it's HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Shechina. What Kuchabrich or HaKadosh Baruch Hu? What Shechente or Shechina? These are two levels of God. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Kuchabrich Hu, is a higher level of God. As the word Kadosh means separate, beyond, remote. That is the core energy within your service of God. Within all the Torah you study, all the commandments you do, the core is this energy of Hagadosh Baruch Hu, which we would usually refer to in terms of a service of God as the Ratzon Ha'elyon, the supernal will, the supernal divine will that's embedded, that's the core of every service, meaning, why am I making blessing? Because that's what God wants. Why am I studying Torah? Because that's what God wants. Why am I washing my hands in this ritualized fashion? Because that's what God wants. Any service of God is because that's what God wants. Every service at its core is an aspect, a manifestation of the Ratzon Ha'elion, the supernal will of God. And that level of God, his supernal will is HaKadosh Baruch. What's Shechinte Shechina? As we said, Shechinte Shechina is the repository of the Jewish people, the repository of all souls. So when we say, L'shem, Yichol, Kuchabrich, Shechinte, this is for the unification. This is for the purpose of the unification of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, this higher, more remote level of godliness, the supernal will of God, and Shchinte Shchina, the source of the souls. That's what's supposed to happen every time I serve God. There's a fusion of my soul with God's will, and that's true. And that's what happens every time I serve. We're saying it officially as the introduction to prayers right before Baruch Shamar, and it's true all day long. So every time we pray or we do any other service, any commandment, any Torah study, there's a fusion going on. It's a very personal fusion of my soul and God's will. My soul, because my soul is what is engaged in this act. And God's will, because what I'm doing is God's will. There's an elicitation of God's will every time I serve. So my soul is the catalyst now to fuse with the will of God that's elicited by the service, by the commandment, which is his will. So you're saying the Shema prayer? You're fusing your soul, an aspect of Shechina, with the will of God as the body of the Shema prayer. You're giving charity, Shechinte, your soul, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the will of God, to give charity. And that's what happens all day long. But now we're doing it on a much greater level. Because now my intention is not Shechina, meaning as it comes down and is manifest in this piece of God inside of me. I mean real deal Shechina. I mean Shechina as she is in the world of Atzilus. Shechina as she is the repository of all souls. Because I want to be selfless. Or you could say, because I know the Jewish people have big needs now. Timely, I'm learning this now. There's a lot of need in the world. There's a lot of pain in the world. There's a lot of trauma in the world. There's a lot of suffering in the world. And I can do something to help. So now this fusion of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Shechina, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the source of God's will, Shechina, the source of the soul, not just as it is personally for me every single time I serve, where my soul, a manifestation of Shechina, is fusing with a manifestation of a Kodesh Baruch Hu as it's embedded in this commandment, and then it comes to me. Now I want it to be really, literally, a fusion of a Kodesh Baruch Hu and Shechina, a fusion of the will of God, a Kodesh Baruch Hu, that's embedded in this commandment with Shechina, with the repository of all souls. I want those two energies to fuse. And then what comes from that fusion, from that intimacy, from that bonding of this higher masculine dimension of God, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, 
And this feminine dimension of God, Shechina, the source of all Torah mitzvahs, fusing with the source of all souls, the product, the godly child born from this relationship is going to affect the source of every single soul. Literally Shechina. So literally it will trickle down to every single soul of every single Jew. That's my intention. That's what I'm accomplishing when I focus and intend and give my service to the Jewish people. Now the Rebbe here explains in parentheses, there's a side note, if you see, that there's an additional benefit. <laughs> We're saying there's an amazing benefit here. The amazing benefit is you just did something to help 15 million Jews. Some Jews serve God extensively. Some Jews left. Some Jews might not know they're Jewish. But every single Jew equally benefited from the commandment I just did. Because it went to the source of souls that fuse with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, with the source of of the commandment with the godly will, the fusion created a product, a child that trickles through Shechina to every single Jew. So that's an amazing benefit. In the side note, the Rebbe is saying, there's another additional very amazing benefit, which if you have very good memory, will be reminiscent of something we said in chapter 40, where from a different angle, we achieve this also very amazing benefit. And also very timely, we want it, we want it now. I'm in the side note. Begun. And also, beyond the fact that now my commandment, which has created this fusion between HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the source of the commandment, the godly supernal will, and Shechina, the source of all the souls, has fused and trickled down to help every single Jew in the world. Beyond that, through this, Yismatku will be sweetened. Yamkein also, Hagvuros Bechasadim. Any judgments. God forbid there shouldn't be any judgments. But if there were, they should all be sweetened with kindness. Memela. And this is just going to happen automatically. Through this fusion of all of God's traits. Through evoking, again, we learned something very similar in chapter 40 from a different angle, but achieving the same goal. Through evoking the revelation of the supernal will of God, Hamasgala Lamaila, which is revealed above, Bisarusa de la through the initiation, through the arousal from below, who Giloi Lamata, Esekatorva Mitzvos, this revelation through my action, my engagement in Torah, my doing the commandment. Shehem Ritzono Isbarech, because that's God's will. as is written, Be'idra Rabba, and Idra Rabba is a Kabbalistic work. With Mishnas Chasadim and another Kabbalistic work, Masechas Arach Ampin, in a Kabbalistic section, Karak Dalit, chapter four. This is all very, very Kabbalistic works. So, what's right in there? Let's get the bottom line. Shetariyag Mitzvah Satayra, that the 613 commandments of the Torah, Nimshachos Mechivra Derach Ampin, are being drawn from this very high level of God's energy, the whiteness of Arach Ampin. Which is the will of God, Mikor Hachasadim, which is the source of kindness. That's the Rebbe saying. What the Rebbe is saying is you're doing something amazing. We're very proud. The Rebbe is, by the way, highly advising this. It doesn't mean every single thing you do, you should always be sacrificing for the Jewish people. Like a person has told me when I've taught this before, well, well, I, I need for myself. But the Rebbe would like you to do this as well. Once a day, once a week, once a month. At a certain point, the Rebbe would like you to do this as well. When you learn the chapter for sure. To give something to the Jewish people. And when you give the Jewish people this gift, the Rebbe is saying, you change the energy of God's traits. Meaning, above, there's God's traits on the right, and on the left, there's kindness and compassion, and there's judgment. They both exist. But we sometimes can do something that changes those dynamics. This is one of those things. <coughs> Because what we are doing here is an enormous elicitation of the will of God. Now, the will of God is embedded in every godly act we do. Again, why am I doing this? Because this is God's will. If it wasn't his will, I wouldn't be doing it. Not nice ideas I made up, things that make me feel good and spiritual and holy and mystical. No, they would all become for me and have zero value. Everything we do is because God said to do it. God told us directly. God told us through the rabbis. Everything is, is God's will. God's will is ultimately source in kindness. So when I'm doing that commandment, 
When I'm studying that Torah and I'm gifting it to the Jewish people, there's an enormous elicitation of the will of God, bigger than when I do the commandment myself. Now, obviously, every time I do a commandment, personally, myself, like we do all day long commandments, we're listening to God's will, <laughs> but it's smaller as how God's will interacts with me, my soul. But now I'm going 15 million big. I'm going for the source of souls, for the source of the soul of every single Jew. So obviously in this synergy, there's going to be a mutual relationship of energy. So if we're sending our commandment, not as mine, but as the source of all Jewish souls, if that's the Shechina end, the balance of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the will of God end is going to match it. So we're big time eliciting God's will. That's what's shining. And when God's will is shining, all of the emotive traits of God become subsumed and fused in the will of God. So instead of each one being like an individual separate, we have kindness and we have judgment. We have the beneficence, we have the giving to the Jewish people, and we have the judgment and the severities and the withholding. And they both exist above. But now they fuse, they've converged. Why? Because the will of God is being expressed big time. Because my commandment is now not just my personal uh, possession; it's a possession of the Jewish people. It's eliciting shechina. It's eliciting the repository of all souls. So that big of source is eliciting a very big call from the will of God. When the will of God is expressed, the will of God is really rooted as we read in the note in Arach Anpin. Arach Anpin is a level in what's called Kabbalistically the crown, the Kesser of God. Meaning, if anyone has any questions, please ask me because I'm bringing in, as, as the Rebbe is bringing in here, a number of Kabbalistic ideas, which are explained in Hasidic thought. We have the normative structure of how God's energy is expressed, which is through this, Dimension of 10, three intellectual attributes and seven emotions. Higher than the emotional and intellectual is, so to speak, the crown hovering over all of this. And most specifically, of course, in the world of Atsilos, where this crown is already quasi beyond the whole structure that we call the worlds of Tikkun, the worlds of rectification. Within the crown, we have two dimensions, Arich and Atik. Arich Ampin is the lower dimension of that crown. It's the first point of what we call creation. Now, of course, meaning there's many, 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 many myriads of levels higher, but they're so one with God, they're almost like layers and layers of creator. And starting with Arich Ampin, we're getting the first creation energy. Again, here we're even higher than the world of Atsilas. And from Arach Ampin is the descent to the world of Atsilas and Ambria and Yitzira and Asiya and our physical manifestation. So Arach Ampin is as high as we could go, so to speak, within creation. Now, Arach Ampin is the source of the will of God. It's that energy. We're not even talking about Arach Ampin. We're talking about the Chivra of Arach Ampin. The whiteness, the purity, the intensity, the core of our Ampin. That's the source of the supernal will, which is embedded in every commandment. So when that Arif Ampin is shining, which again is a dimension of Kesser, the crown, the lower dimension of the crown, which is hovering above the 10 divine attributes that we call Kabbalistically the Spheros, Spherot of the world of Atsilos. When that Arif Ampin is shining, all of the attributes in the world of Atsilas all merge and fuse because they're all nullified. So they lose their individual separate, I'm giving, I'm withholding, I'm beneficence, I'm judgment. No, it all becomes one amalgamation of energy. And at that point, you know what the energy is, the Rebbe says? It's the energy of kindness. You could say, wait a minute, I get that they're all fusing. They're all nullified. They're all odd. Arach Ampin is shining. The chivra, the whiteness of Arach Ampin is shining. The intensity of Arach Ampin is shining. The first point of creation, that link between creator and creation, 
Kesser, the crowd. I get that's very intense. I get all the attributes are nullified. I get they fuse. But why do they become kind? The Rebbe says, because the will of God is rooted in kindness. That's the bent. That's the direction the supernal will always goes. So if it's a supernal will that's causing this nullification and fusion of all of God's attributes, the flavor that's going to come out is kindness because that's the roots of the supernal will. In essence, God is kind. We say this in a psalm that we say on the Shabbat, on the Shabbos, 26 times. There's 26 stanzas and they all say the same thing in the end. The second half of each verse. Ki la'aylam chasto. Because his kindness is eternal. Because his kindness is eternal. Because his kindness is eternal. There's 26 verses because the essence name of God has a numerical value of 26. There are four letters, a U that's value 10, a He that's five, above that six, and a He that's five, that equals 26. So each one of these verses symbolizes one of these energies, 26 verses, the 26 powers of God's essence name. And what is his name? What is his energy? It's kindness. So therefore, the will of God, ultimately, is kindness. So in all of these traits, some on the right and some on the left, some for compassion, some for judgment, some for giving, some for withholding. But when they all merge and become this amalgamation, a challenge of one energy, it's the energy of kindness. And that's what happens when you gift your service to the Jewish people. Because again, then it's not about me, that little bit of supernal will fusing with my soul, it became much bigger. It became global. It became the source of all souls. So it's coming this very huge energy of the divine will, the whiteness of Arach Ampin, this lower dimension of Kesser, of the crown, causing all these energies to fuse, causing them to become one energy. And the only energy now shining above, coming down in our world, is the energy of kindness. And that's what happens when you gift your commandment to the Jewish people. So the Rebbe is saying, look at these two huge things you are accomplishing. Meaning, the Rebbe is asking us something pretty big. To be selfless. We, by nature, are selfish. We, by nature, even in a spiritual way, we can want spirituality. Want the benefits of spirituality. Want the blessings of spirituality. The Rebbe says, be selfless. And look what you're accomplishing. That truly your commandment is helping every single Jew. And that your commandment, fusing the supernal will of your commandment with a source of souls, causes such a shining of Arach Ampin, which is the ultimate source of that will of God that's embedded in your commandment, to cause all of God's attributes to fuse, to be flavored with kindness. So what's trickling down, what the Jewish people receive, is only kindness. And that's what every one of us can achieve anytime. Anytime we choose to say, God, this commandment is not for me. I'm giving this commandment as a gift to the Jewish people. So any questions or thoughts on any of this? I know I went through some heavy duty Kabbalistic concepts. Any questions, any thoughts on any of this? Okay, so let's continue. So now we are finished that side note, We're going back to the body of the text. Girl? Yes. Does this relate to in the Kiddush Hakal Tepuchin and Zeir Ampin? So that's a great question. Wow, you, you're Esther, that's amazing. So we talked there about the Hakal Tepuchin. It means the apple orchard. The apples there are the souls of the Tzadikim, of the most righteous. And we have shining there Zeir Ampin. Okay, so Esther correctly pulled out that word. We have two Kabbalistic terms. Arich Ampin, which would translate as the long face. Ampin is Aramaic for a face. And Zeir Ampin, which translates as the small face. They are talking about two different levels of God's energy. Arich Ampin, as I've explained, is beyond the normative spiritual world, highest spiritual world, that seal us beyond that, because it's in the crown, the Kesser. It's the lower dimension in the crown higher than the structure of the highest world in our solar system of worlds, in our worlds that we call tikkun, of rectification, higher than the energy of Atsilos. Within Atsilos, 
as I said, we have three intellectual attributes of God and seven, call all seven emotional. <laughs> Those seven emotional attributes are Kabbalistically referred to as Zeir Anpin, the minor, smaller image of the face of God. Why is it called Zeir? It's, it's seven attributes. Because, again, we have in contrast here, the energy of the crown higher than the structure, that's the intensity of the energy. And now in the emotion, in contrast, it's a much smaller, though obviously very high energy that we refer to as Zeir. But that's amazing you picked up that reference. Anyone else? Something else, else mm -hmm. something else I would love to go through either privately or in the group is when you come towards the end of the welcoming the Shabbos. And it talks about the oneness and taking the throne, going to the mystery of oneness and about the, oh, I don't want to take up the time to read it all. Yeah, but this, it's, these are very but, capitalistic pieces there, which are right, talking about what's achieved to, in on Shabbos. More, right, <laughs> right. This is, these are levels of, what we call unification, levels of oneness. I'll just say very globally and briefly this idea, because Esther's right, of course, it will be like out of our Tanya pay grade. But the basic idea is our world during the week is a world energized by the speech of God. Now, speech, in a sense, for humans, of course, is something separate than you. You speak and the words leave you. Now, obviously, by God, nothing leaves him. And God, his words, after he say them as is one with him, as before, we would even, so to speak, think them. But still, it implies a certain level of separation. Of course, nothing's ultimately separated from God. That's during the week. On Shabbos, as the prayer that Esther is referring to discusses, we come to a much deeper place of God's reality where we don't have this seeming separation. It's a level of unification. It's so deep that we say that on Shabbos, the world is not vivified from God's speech, as it is all week long, but from a deeper place from God's thoughts. Because what's the difference between thought and speech? Thought and speech are both revelation, but speech is a revelation outside of yourself. And thought is a revelation to self. Like sometimes when people think, they speak out loud, right? They they speak their thoughts. The Shia is like God's subconscious, God's unlettered thought. Are they speaking? No, they're really thinking out loud. <laughs> Meaning this, the, it's really self-directed talk, which is what thoughts are. It just happens to be vocalized out loud. So speech is a revelation outward. Thought is a revelation to oneself. The whole week is God's speech, outward revelation, creation bound. Shabbos is unification, is inward bound. So all of creation then is being vivified, not by speech, but by thought, which is why there's this idea of unification, because thought, though it's a revelation, but it's an inward revelation. And as Esther said, never forget, we get to the next stage, which is Mashiach, where we're told is an even deeper unification than Shabbos, because Shabbos <laughs> is like God's thoughts. God's thoughts so intimate and deep that they can't even have words of thought that would already be a barrier to the oneness that we will all experience all of creation will experience by Mashiach